Hello! This is an Ancore Tech demonstrational video, and today I'll be covering how to operate one of our software-defined radars in FMCW mode using the SDR GUI. I'll be using an Ancore Tech SDR Kit 2400AD2 for today's demonstration. This is one of our advanced line products with two receive channels. The device operates from 24 to 26 GHz and includes the SDR RF 2482 module, the SDR PM 404 module, the SDR GUI modified for twin receiving channels, power, data, and RF cables, three horn antennas used for transmitting and receiving, as well as the enclosure. The SDR GUI is an application Ancore Tech has developed to help demonstrate the power and ease of use that our software-defined radars provide. Once started, the application defaults to FMCW mode. Readily, you can choose your bandwidth, samples collected per sweep, and sweep duration. All of these settings can be adjusted while the application is running, and they'll update the radar on the next immediate sweep. The display mode selector adjusts your current viewing mode. Right now we're in range and time scope. This mode displays a time scope of the raw samples and a range plot which is set to focus on the largest amplitude target. The velocity scope mode displays a scope view of the complete set of sweeps used for the Doppler velocity calculation. The computed velocity is plotted below. The range velocity map mode displays the computed range on the y-axis and the Doppler or radial velocity on the x-axis. The radial velocity is centered at zero. The color represents the magnitude of the return and we'll cover how to adjust the color when we get to the display parameters tab. The range waterfall mode displays a time scope plot of a single sweep up top. Below is the same range output information we saw in the first operating mode, but displayed in a waterfall format so that we can observe changes over time. As before, the color represents the magnitude of the return, and we'll cover how to adjust that in just a bit. The last mode is the velocity waterfall mode. In this mode, we're going to plot the same velocity shown in the second mode, but in a waterfall plot to observe changes through time. Okay. For the next set of demonstrations, let's switch over to the range waterfall scope. Now, let's perform some stream filtering. Every time you switch display modes, the GUI will load in default filtering parameters that we feel work best in that mode. Right now, since I'm interested in viewing range, the GUI is applying a DC subtraction before the FFT range calculation, and also running the sweeps through a Hamming window to reduce side lobes. We're also implementing a moving average direct clutter cancellation filter to try and remove static objects like tables or houses from the range display. If you're outside, or in a location where multipath isn't too much of a concern, you can use the outdoor range weighting feature to apply nonlinear amplification, which emphasizes objects that are farther away. Finally, you can set limits on the upper and lower ranges you're interested in viewing. For example, if you don't want to see anything before 3 meters, and anything under 30 meters, I can slide these controls to get the window that I want. Great! Now let's move on to adjusting our display using the Display Parameters tab. The GUI will attempt to normalize the dynamic range to a range from the largest amplitude return to the weakest. You can disable the automatic mode for each limit and set it to something yourself. Below this is the Update Rate control, which sets the desired screen update rate. It's important to note now the update time note on the bottom of the screen. This note is displaying a summation of how long it takes the GUI to finish one complete data cycle. In other words, how long it takes to grab a sweep, process the sweep, and update the display. It's wise to not set your update rate below what the update time is displaying. The program will attempt to not hang up your system and will limit itself to the update time if the rate is ever set too low. The Doppler Parameters tab is useful when you're observing velocity. The control sets the number of sweeps to use when finding the Doppler velocity. Increasing this will increase the Doppler velocity resolution, but also increase the update time due to the extra number of sweeps that need to be collected. I can show you a quick demonstration of this by switching to the Velocity Scope mode. Now let's decrease the sweep count to 8. As I'm moving my hand back and forth, notice how the lobes have dramatically increased in width with the lower sweep count. And if I increase it, the Doppler resolution also increases. 
The last controls we have are for setting the waterfall display. We can adjust the number of rows, interpolation method, as well as the color scheme that's used. There are a number of ways you can export data from the GUI. First, any plot you see can be exported as a figure. Simply select the output type, for example here I'll use PDF since it's cleanly outputted as a vector graphic, and then pick either the top or bottom display button. The GUI will immediately capture the output and ask you where to save the file. I'll save it to the desktop and let's open it up. You can also export the raw samples collected to a raw text file. Let's make a three second recording and save it to the desktop. Now I can open it in either MATLAB or a plain text editor to view the samples. When it's opened, you'll see the first row shows the frequency, then sweep duration in milliseconds, then the number of samples per sweep, and finally the bandwidth. The second to last tab is an additional feature that we found helpful when setting up the application remotely. It allows you to tether a camera to the display inside the GUI. This comes in handy when you'd like to use the GUI in full screen mode and still observe the scene of interest at the same time. That wraps up our tour of FMCW operation mode for Ancortex SDR GUI. You can find more videos, demonstrations, and information on our website at www.ancortech.com. Thank you so much for watching.